Hey everyone! So I've been getting a lot of questions recently about things called Programmable Logic Controllers, or PLCs. I did a video about those a while back, but it was a really surface level video and I feel like I could do a lot better job at explaining a little bit more about what these devices are and, a, and really about how to actually use them. You can find tons of videos and articles and, and written things that describe what a PLC is and what its main function is, but sometimes it helps to understand a little bit more about how and why it works. That way you can kind of grasp the concept just a little bit better. So first, I guess we do have to start with what is it, or at least what does it look like, so that you can kind of get an idea of what we're dealing with. And there's a lot of different ways these things can look, but there are similarities. So there's a few examples. I have some smaller models here, and you'll notice that between different brands, there are a lot of similarities between how they look. Now this is one that is one of my favorite ones to use, just due to the low cost, the ease of use, uh, but it's, it may not be necessarily seen in industry quite as much. It's made by a brand called Automation Direct. They sell a lot of, of uh, supplies for automation and electrical use. Uh, this PLC is designed to have a processor, which is a programmable part of it, means that it must have a processor or a CPU, just like a computer inside of it, but it also has the ability to stack on more of these, what they call modules on the side, which can accept things like sensor signals or buttons, switches. It can also turn on things like relays or coils or lights uh, and be able to drive things like motors uh, and, and other process systems. Uh, touchscreen interfaces, things that can run hydraulic motors, those kind of things. Uh, a few other brands, and again, these you'll see some similarities here, rows of screw terminals, just like the other one had. This one is made by Rockwell or Allen Bradley. Here's another one that's made by Siemens. They all have similarities in the fact that we need to hook up signals and sensors to them. And really importantly, we also need to have a way to connect the computer to it, because since it's programmable, we have to be able to download a program to the PLC to tell it what to do. I mean, we can hook up sensors and buttons, lights, switches, we, we can hook anything we want up to it, but if we don't tell it what to do, then it's basically just a lump of plastic and some computer parts that are connected. Now, one of the great things about it, I, I think people tend to look at programmable systems and automation, and they think that just because it can be programmed, it must be a lot more complicated. Like, we can have a big circuit that drives automation. They've been doing that for decades. But PLC, is the processor part, is, is relatively new. So we think, well, if it's new and it's computery, it must be really complicated. But actually, in reality, the circuits that are used to drive the PLCs, the circuits that interact with the real-world stuff, is actually far simpler than any automated circuit that's using traditional, what they call, relay logic. The circuits inside a PLC, or, or actually outside of a PLC, the ones that interact with the PLC, are designed to have one device connect to one terminal on the PLC so that we know exactly what that thing is doing. So whenever there's just one device, like the sensor or the button or the switch or the light, and one terminal on the PLC, that means that every circuit, even the most complicated circuits that we deal with, only have two things inside of them, the PLC and the other device. So that makes them very consistent and really simple. So when it comes to troubleshooting hardware problems on PLCs, like the wiring issues, that is some of the easiest circuits in the world to diagnose and troubleshoot because they'll be all similar to each other. You compare that to the relay type circuits where you can have an entire wall of interconnected hundreds and thousands of wires and one thing up in one place can affect everything else further down. That's just not the case with PLC wiring. Now the program inside is where all of the devices interact or influence the others. So it's not to say that it is all really simple. There are some complicated parts, but at least in terms of the wiring and the connections, we can kind of subdivide the, the job of the PLC up into the connections and wiring with the real world devices and the programming, and at least one of those is really simple. So let's take a look at how we might wire something simple up to a PLC, and then how we can download a simple program to a PLC, and we'll take a look at the entire scope of a PLC project to give you a little bit better understanding of how these devices actually work. So let's check out some wiring first. Inside this trainer, we have a set of output and input devices, so some push buttons with some lights. We have a coil or a contactor, which is usually made for driving a big three-phase motor, a sensor, and we have a set of stack lights. Uh, it's a series of four lights up at the top, but we can choose to use one or we can use all. Uh, we can 
pretty much have a sandbox mode to play with whatever we want. Now this piece right here, this is the programmable logic control. This one is again made by Automation Direct. Now the first part of the adventure with PLCs is, is the initial connection to it or the ability to make this PLC talk to everything else around it. Now you notice on this one up at the top, it has two of what, what look like these ethernet ports like you might see on a laptop or on a computer or an internet router, things like that. And that's really exactly what they are. But we don't wanna get too locked into thinking that, well, just because it looks kinda like that means it has to be a, uh, a, a device like an ethernet device. These two here are grounded ethernet. That's why they have the metal case around them shielded. But there's actually another one right next to it that we'll zoom in here in a second, um, but we'll be able to see that this is a serial port, an RS-232 port, which looks a lot like an ethernet cable, but it's not quite. Kind of like the way old telephone cables used to, they look like ethernet cables, but they were a lot smaller because they had fewer pins. There's also a little connector on this one uh, that uses what they call an RS-485 connection, which is actually fairly similar to the types of connections that are used to communicate all the sensors inside of a vehicle. Uh, it's a similar kind of architecture there. And so really the, the reason for getting, giving us all these different options is that we have no idea how exactly somebody's going to wire their facility. It may be that it's this huge, this huge factory that's all networked together using ethernet and fiber optic connections, or it may just be one tiny little machine that needs nothing more than one little piece of information shared between the, the, two, the pieces of equipment. So we have no idea what we're dealing with, so it's nice that they make a PLC that basically says, hey, whatever you've got, we can make it connect. It's very convenient when they do something like that. So we're going to take the green button and connect it to the PLC, and we'll go ahead and take this blue light and connect it to the PLC so that we can design a very simple program that shows how to make the button turn on the light, or we can use things like timing. Maybe you push the button and then it waits a certain amount of time and turns on the light. The cool thing is after we've made the wiring connection, we don't have to do any more changing to the wiring. We don't need to go buy new parts. If we want to change something, all we have to do is go into the computer, make a change, and delay our process for just a couple of seconds while the program downloads, and now we have a brand new live program. Very handy. So let's take a look at how the wiring is going to work. Now, I have a power supply over here that's supplied by the breaker. Uh, the breaker is coming from another 24 volt power supply, but we have our, our original power inputs here that I'm going to need to get power to the button. Now the button has some contacts, contact blocks down here, so I need to get power from here to here. Then I need to be able to send that power from here to the PLC, but then I also need to get from the PLC back to ground. So that means I'm gonna need three wires. Uh, blue and blue white are a pretty industry standard convention. Now I'm gonna need two blue ones because I'm gonna have power, which is indicated by a blue wire coming from power to the button. And then from the button to the PLC, there's a chance that it will also be powered but then from the PLC back to ground is just a ground wire. So I'll use a blue and white striped wire for that one. So I'm gonna zoom in here and look at a top down view so that you can see exactly how that wiring takes place now that you understand kind of the big scheme of how we're going to approach the, the wiring challenge. Every PLC is gonna be slightly different in the wiring setup, but they are going to be the same in the fact that we need to complete circuits no matter what we're doing. So we are going to be using the push button and a light but in both cases, we need to be able to identify what do these numbers mean on the top of the PLC. And in this case, letters and numbers. So these, are, these top eight are the inputs. These bottom eight are outputs. This is called a combination module. In our case, we didn't need a whole lot of inputs and outputs. So eight of each is just fine. In order to complete a circuit, you have to be able to supply power to the device, the control device. In the case of an input, the button is the control device. In the case of an output, like a light or a relay, the PLC itself is actually the control device. So we need to supply power to the button for the inputs, and we need to supply power to the common terminal to the PLC for the outputs, because it is the control device. Then we need to get that power from the button to the PLC, and in the case of the output light, we need to go from the PLC to the light, but then our last step is going to be the connection back to ground. In the case of the input, since the PLC is the final device, it will be the one to connect back to ground. In the case of the light, the output device, we go from the PLC to the light, which means the light is the last thing and it will be the path back to ground. So I'll go ahead and connect up those wires and then we'll take a real quick summary of it. Uh, and then let's see how that looks once we actually can get to the programming and decide how, that, how those connections are supposed to take place, not just physically, but also virtually inside the software that's driving the process. So we'll take a look at the wiring here as soon as I get that finished. 
So now we have the wiring finished. The wires go from power to the button, the button goes off to the PLC, and then the ground returns it back to the supply, to the ground side of the supply. Likewise, the output, the light, the blue light that we're using, is going from power to the PLC, to the common terminal, and then from the PLC to the light, which is returning it back to ground. So if I apply power and I press the green button, you can see that there is a light illuminating on the PLC. That LED indicates that the circuit has been completed and it is receiving the information. Now at this point, I can press the button, but the blue light doesn't do anything because now that's up to the software's job. So now let's take a look at the software side and see now that we have one input circuit with a button and one output circuit with a light, that alone is not enough to complete the job. We'll have to take a look at how does ladder logic apply to the connection between the real world or the field devices and the virtual environment that actually drives the ability to do things and make changes without having to go back and have expensive downtime and expensive components and parts making changes is just a matter of a few clicks, a few types, and then a few seconds to go offline, download the project, and go back online again. A very simple process. So let's take a look at the software side of it next. So here we have the uh, software that's going to be driving our PLC program. This is called Productivity Suite, and again, it's uh, respective of brand. So in this case, Automation Direct is the manufacturer of this one. All of them are gonna look a little bit different, but the behavior is going to be the same. The first thing that we need to do is determine what PLC we're dealing with. So in this case, I'm going to start a new project and knowing in this case, I'm working with a P1550. Part numbers, again, are gonna be different depending on what PLC and what manufacturer you're dealing with, but that's the one we're dealing with in this case. So I'm going to say continue, and then I could have gone to hardware configuration, but let me explain just a little bit about what's going on here. This here is what we call ladder logic. It looks like rungs of a ladder, and that's exactly the, the reason for the name. Ladder logic is a whole bunch of statements that say, if the stuff on this side is true, then let's make the stuff on this side true. So typically over here, we'll have combinations of push buttons. Maybe we need to, uh, if an operator presses a start button and a sensor is true, and there's no, uh, the, the temperature isn't too high, and the tank isn't too full. So this, as long as the combination of stuff is true, let's make the output true. Zoom in just a little bit here so that we can see it a little bit more easily. And really quickly, I'm going to go over here to hardware configuration. Hardware configuration means that when I have the PLC, all it understands is that, hey, you're gonna to talk to a P1550 processor, but it doesn't know what's attached to the side like our combination module. Now it does not understand and never will understand that we have a button and a blue light connected, but at least that little module that's attached to the side, we have to tell it that it's here. In the case of other brands, we are going to have to go through always a hardware configuration. We're going to have to tell it what modules are attached to it. So I'm going to come down here and we've got our combination P116CDR happens to be the one that we're using and I'm going to drag it right here and I'm going to add the default tags. We'll probably save the tag discussion for something later. Uh, there's a lot to talk about with PLCs, but this is just an introduction. Now I have what looks like our exact PLC setup. That's perfect. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to build a very simple program. I'm going to use here an NO contact, which in some cases is going to be called an XIC, examine if closed. Like when you push a button, a normally open button, it closes. So I want to examine if closed, XIC. Now I happen to know that that one is connected to a, what they call a tag or the screw terminal that's relating to digital input. It's the very first one, digital input 0111. Again, addressing the way this is written, maybe a little bit different between brands, but regardless, we're going to have to say, you need to go out and look at the very first terminal to see whether it's on or off. I don't care which brand of PLC you're using, you're always gonna to have to tell it where to look. Now out here, we're going to go to an out coil. An out coil says, hey, when this stuff is true, let's make this true. Now in this case, it's not the input, but the output, the very first output. DO, so digital output, 0111. That's the address for the very first one. Now this is our entire program. This is all that it takes to get the button to turn on the blue light. So we do need to choose who we're talking to. So let's choose a CPU. Right now I have it connected by an ethernet connection, which means the ethernet cable is 
going between my laptop and the ethernet port. I didn't have to do anything else. It auto discovered it. We're done. Connect. That's all it takes. Now here we can either use the project that's already in the CPU or we can use the one that I'm working on right now and download it. I'm going to go ahead and use the one that I'm downloading. Be careful if you're actually working in the real world. You want, you do not want to erase the PLC project with one that's on your computer. Be very careful with that. But here I do want to use this one and send it to the PLC. So I'm going to use my PC project. I'm sorry that PC and PLC sound so similar, but that's just kind of the way it goes. Uh, there's also final thing is we need to transfer or in some brands, I'll call it downloading. Downloading takes the project from the, from the computer, the one I'm dealing with to the PLC. So I click there and it says stop mode transfer. So we'll do stop mode transfer and it's showing me the progress. It's just going to take a couple of seconds here and it will be done. And there it is. Now, the program is running right now. So let's take a look back over to the PLC, the, the hardware setup, and let's see if now pushing the button is going to activate that light. So let's test it and see if it works now. I press the green button and I see that the blue light turns on and I see that the indicator down on the PLC has also turned on. So we did it, we downloaded our very first program. Now, interesting thing here also is since I've connected via ethernet, I see the activity light blinking. If I want to send information back to the PLC, it's constantly reporting back what the status of the button and the light are. So no matter where this is, this ethernet cable may be connected in a, another building or another office further away in the building. I can still see the status of the push button and the blue light no matter where I am as long as I'm connected. So that's our first introduction to PLCs. Obviously, we could spend hours and hours and hours talking about this. And, and even this first introduction here took us a little while to make it through. But this is a great, uh, a great example of how we can build a very simple program in really just a few seconds. There wasn't anything aside from the wiring that I fast forwarded here. And the wiring really only took me a couple of minutes. In a real world machine, you have to route things through through around cables and things like that. So it may take a little bit longer, but really that didn't take us very long at all to come up with a program that now I can change the behavior of this anytime I want with just a few clicks, a download, the transfer to the PLC, and we're done. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to try and divide, design a few more videos that will uh, show a few more of the maybe more complicated operations inside a PLC. But I hope this is a great introduction. And as always, if you have any questions, let me know and I'd love to answer them. Have a great day.